films. I'm Jimmy P, filmmaker and sexual astronaut. First up, guys, please check out our fourth feature film for free over on YouTube. Just search for Little Monster or click on the link in the show notes below. This episode, I'm joined by a very special guest, Mr. Daniel Mark Young of Viral Films. Dan, thank you so much for joining us on the show this week. I was first made aware of, of you and Viral Films way back when I think we both appeared in the same documentary about our mutual love for John Carpenter's Halloween, um, for the love of the boogeyman uh, from Bloody Flicks, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, then we connected via Facebook and the, the, the marvels of social media. Uh, and through that, then I was able to obviously check down, check out a lot of your previous short films as well. So starting with your short films, what was the motivation about you getting into filmmaking and actually starting with short films in the first place? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having us on. Um, big fan of the show. Um, yeah, I mean, we just kind of films have always been my thing, man. I don't know, like growing up, I grew up in a small like town, not a lot to do. Films were kind of my escape, so like I grew up around a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't have been watching, um, and I think that's the case for most of us. Like you know, horror filmmakers from a young age, you just kind of get sort of desensitized to the stuff that you know you shouldn't be watching it, but you watch it anyway. Um, and so yeah, I watched a lot of horror movies growing up. Simple as that, and uh, was kind of fascinated with the kind of the behind the scenes stuff, like how things were made, makeup effects, etc., um, and just the overall process of making movies. Um, and then I suppose with the advent of things like DVD, you get, you know, laser disc and DVD, you got to see a lot, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, that was always fascinating to me. And so I always had a massive sort of, uh, passion for like, for films. Um, and so I suppose it just kind of made sense that that's kind of what I wanted to do. I left school without any kind of, uh, real inclinations to what I was going to do. So I joined a media production course at college and that sort of taught me. I want to say it taught me the basics. It kind of taught me the basics of kind of, you know, shooting things, editing things, etc. cetera. Um, and then kind of didn't do anything for a while and it kind of got this itch to be like, you know, at the time I left college, the idea of making a film, even a short film, was kind of seemed like a million miles away because it was just always so expensive to do. But then technology caught up to the point where you know, you could buy a DLSR, a DSLR and, and shoot something and, you know, it would look decent enough, you know, you could pass it off as a, a short film. And so once technology caught up, I think I was at the stage where I was like, OK, I can do this now. Um, short films was just kind of my way and I didn't want to kind of jump into features or anything like that. I wanted to have the whole process down. I wanted to have the process of kind of, you know, writing and, and shooting stuff and editing and sound and everything, get everything kind of like my workflow down before I attempt anything on a much larger scale. So it was always, so there's, there's a little bit of an experimental edge to a lot of the stuff I did to begin with. I'd made some short films in college. Hopefully they'll never see the light of day um, online or anything like that. But yeah, um, I, well, I've got a VHS somewhere. I might dig it out just for shits and giggles, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we made it, we made, we started off um, making just a few little bits and pieces and then we decided we were going to try and do something uh, take it a little bit more seriously. We did a film called Run. It's the first thing we ever like properly cast for, um, and that was a whole new territory. We'd never cast for a movie. We'd always just got friends and family and stuff involved. So that was weird, um, you know. And that was an experience in itself. And then actually working with actors, actors that had been in things, and actually directing them, and you know, getting the experience of that. And so short films for me were just my way of experiencing things on a smaller scale and trying to gain the experience of of directing and you know all that kind of stuff and get kind of our kind of i guess style or whatever just get that down get the process of it down so that when we do jump into the feature world it's you know we know what we're doing um and so it's kind of like that was our kind of five-year plan of make a bunch of short films and then you know after so many years when we felt ready enough jump into features cool so i mean you said a five-year plan was that very much set in stone or was that you know kind of up in the air where, where did the the five-year plan kind of come from um i think it's just something i said to myself i felt like i think we we kind of started taking the filmmaking side of things seriously in like 2015 that's when we said oh we, we are viral films we've got our company name and everything and you know um started to you know really delve into doing stuff a bit more properly and a little bit more professionally um and so I just felt like five, after five years, we would have, even if we did a feature a year, 
a, a short film a year, we'd have five shorts and that would hopefully be enough to just establish ourselves and say, look, here we are, this is what we've done. Um, and we'd sort of be in a position to say, let's look into doing feature work. It wasn't necessarily set in stone, but it actually, it kind of worked out uh, almost that way. Um, you know, we'd made we'd made a bunch of stuff and we'd, we'd sort of, got to a stage where we were sort of struggling to get a few things made and off the ground. And um, we, not to jump ahead too much, but the project, you know, uh, Into the Black Abyss Death Stream, the, our feature film, kind of came about through the sort of the necessity to make something. You know, um, we got to a stage where we had all these great ideas for short films, but they were finding them really hard to kind of um fund or get made for various reasons um you know we wanted to make a really cool werewolf movie but it was going to be too expensive and apparently it was yeah unfortunately it was just too, too much to try and fund it uh, if it was a feature it might have been a different story but um we just found that there was a lot of not so much backlash but a, a bit of pushback on people wanting to fund short films rather than features because again features you know, there's a bit more kind of, uh, they have a bit more legs, They, you know, they have a bit more of a, a lifespan, I think, and the people are more willing to kind of help fund those. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. And like, I, I'm completely guilty of it myself in terms of, you know, out there and, and funding stuff. Um, but you'd think, you know, like all of us, we've got so little free time on our hands. You'd think people would be like, hey, you know what? 40 minute short film. Actually, I, I can fit that in rather than, you know, trying to squeeze in an hour and a half each or whatever. But yeah, there is some. Yeah. There's a mental kind of block that a lot of people have uh, when it comes to short films, funding them, even getting people to sit down and watch them. But yeah, I yeah. don't know what it is. I'm sure there's much smarter psychologists out there who who would be able to kind of explain reasons behind it. So one of the things I, I, I kind of noticed from the short films that I've been able to track down, maybe not your, your college films, which you've got you know locked in the vault somewhere, but yeah. I noticed obviously a big passion for horror and is is that again influenced by the films you kind of grew up with where where does that come from and is that you know a genre that you you're going to want to stick in or um yeah i mean again that, yeah it, it it all goes back to pretty much my childhood that's the majority of what i kind of grew up on again the stuff the forbidden fruit the stuff you, should, you know you shouldn't be watching you know it was all about that so yeah it was kind of i don't know horror's always just been my thing i don't know like it's um just I just think it's such an interesting genre to play around in. It's so diverse and vast, and there's so much you can do within the genre. It's, you know, it, it's you can do anything. You know, almost pretty much anything. You know, um, and so I just always loved that. It was you never knew like, you, and again, it was always that thing like you know, especially back in the days of like VHS, you'd look at the artwork and you go, wow, and then you'd watch the movie and you go wow, that really wasn't what I expected. But, you know, you never knew. You never knew. That was the beauty of it. So you never knew what you were going to get. You could get, like, some really sort of mundane, boring-ass, you know, movie that was kind of dull. Or you could get, like, The Evil Dead or something like that that was just like, this is amazing. Um, so, yeah. And I think, I, for, for me, growing up, you know, kid of the VHS era, um, you know, spending far too much time in video shops and looking at this wall. Oh, yeah just like the artwork or whatever i think it also helped that with the exception maybe of the police academy movies there weren't massive franchises in other genres you know yeah uh, apart from maybe porn but you know again i'd never admit you know i was looking at the top shelf as well but <laughs> um yeah you know you had the friday the 13th and every spin mm. they could do on jason's hockey mask or, or whatever every variant of it and i was it was it had that kind of and again i you know i was a kid so i was just at best convincing my folks to rent this but it was almost like a collector's thing that i had to watch them all and and see how it developed yeah. or whatever so yeah, yeah absolutely i think yeah you, you hit the nail on the head with the it being forbidden fruit but also yeah this addictive quality to it as well yeah. which yeah. you know has affected a you know a whole bunch of us um and, and i always find it amusing going back to something you said earlier when I talk to other filmmakers um, and not necessarily horror filmmakers, you know, I'm talking about horror projects with them and they're like, but why do you want to make horror films? I'm like, why don't you want to make horror films? You know? It's the most, I mean, the most fun. Yeah. Like how many yeah. period dramas do you get to play with, you know, fake blood and working on gags and, you know, the idea of trying to make people jump or just to actually scare the shit out of people rather than make people just feel like warm and fuzzy. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And the same goes like when when you talk to actors and stuff that work, you know, 
um, we've worked with some of the same people, but like, you know, when you get people that really genuinely love to be in horror movies, they do it all for the same reason because it's the most fun. They have the most fun working on sets of horror movies. You know, they can they can go off and do a sci-fi movie or a, or a drama or whatever, and it's fine and it pays the bills. But they have fun on the horror movies, and that's you know, it's the same for directing and anything you know to do with making them. It's it, it's it's a weird kind of sickness, I'm sure, because again, you know, having cameoed in in some of my own films, um, you know, you're covered in fake blood at three in the morning and freezing and then yeah you, but you're you having know, a blast man you are and you can't explain it and it is so great and definitely i mean i think we're both talking about derek nelson to find actors like derek who absolutely love the genre so much yeah. that they keep coming back and and you put these actors through torture um, which they wouldn't have got in other films but yeah you know derek and and other guys i've worked with they are just yeah absolutely up for it and i i think for an actor yeah it just puts them in these situations which normal you know traditional dramas period pieces or whatever they they don't get to exercise those kind of acting muscles i i would guess i can only imagine what it's like because I'm, I'm not an actor I, you know i have no ambitions to be one um but yeah like I say again we meant you mentioned derek nelson we worked with a few times um the one that again that i love working with him because he just a, a he he knows horror. He knows the horror genre. He watches plenty of it, and he's involved in it deeply. But he's the sort of person you go, "Hey Derek, let's just do this thing and cover you in blood." And whatever. and he's he's in there, one hundred and ten percent. He won't, you know, he he doesn't sort of say, "Oh no, I don't." Really, oh, that. He's like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's just cover in blood. I'm cool with it. Let's go." You know. So I love I love the enthusiasm of that guy. So one thing we're going to do before we move on to short films is uh, definitely what we'll do is drop in the show notes some links to some of your short films as well. Um, oh, cool. So uh, you mentioned Run, uh, which is a great yep. little twist uh, on, on Jeez, I suppose, like it starts off as kind of like a slasher genre kind of thing and then goes other places. Um, for her as well, I absolutely loved when I saw that dude. Like just the, oh, thanks, again, you're expecting it to be kind of like this romantic film and it's shot very much like that for the most part. And then it goes other places. I won't spoil, but again, yeah, absolutely yeah. loved it. And I loved another one you did, which kind of felt almost like a precursor to Into the Black Abyss. I can't even speak. Into the Black <laughs> um, was Stranger. And yeah. I think it yeah. might have been because it was very much like first person um, and, you know, there were glitches and effects like that. Was that kind of your gateway then into like the whole found footage subgenre? Would you say, or yeah, kind of, I guess in a way, yeah. I mean, there's definitely some parallels there. That was one that we shot early on. That was one of the first things we did, and it literally came from the idea of um, what's the simplest kind of story we can tell with very little. Literally, we shot it in about ten minutes. That it, it was just like we had it sort of planned out, and we said, "What's the quickest thing we can we can shoot that's going to be like tell a tell a story without really telling a story, without having a script or anything that's going to be a, an have like an effective scare and all that, and just be generally creepy and just a bit of fun, you know?" So it's literally like a, it's a minute and a half long. It's really short, but I think yeah, we shot it in about ten minutes. It was that it was that simple, you know. And I just I just wanted to experiment with shooting something very very quick and dirty because we did we shot it very quick and dirty and um just doing it like just seeing how effective we could make something that was quite a simple idea um and seeing how far we could take that and so that was that was stranger and it, again really short like two and a, well minute and a half i think it it runs at um and yeah really basic premise next like pretty much no script to it i think you know there's dialogue in there but that was recorded after the fact um, and lay it in and and just you know um really really basic concept and, and and the kind of i think for that it was a case of shooting it in a found footage style was just i think for speed more than anything whereas with death stream the found footage aspect of it actually serves the story more because i think that's i like to think that's kind of what we try and do with viral films at, at viral films is we focus on the story first, what kind of story we're trying to tell. Um, and aside from maybe a few of our sort of more experimental shorts, that's kind of where we start. That's the kind of foundation. I think you have to have a good story. Otherwise, you know, what's the point, you know? Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think in a way, we I always wanted to do something found footage -y. I didn't 
necessarily planned for our first feature to be a found footage movie, but that's just how things planned. That's sort of how things plotted out, really. Um, but yeah, Stranger's a weird one. It's a sort of it's a very sort of quick and over before you know it kind of thing. But um, the idea was we just wanted to get out and shoot stuff. I literally just got my hands on the Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera, um, and uh, and we shot. We we I bought like the cheapest lens I could get off of eBay. I think, and I can't remember what it was. It was some dirt cheap piece of crap that we got off of eBay. And so we literally just said, right, we're going to shoot something with this. Don't know what it is, but we'll figure it out. And we just came up with the idea very, very quickly. And we shot it very, very quickly. And it just, you know, I think it works. I think it works. Oh, absolutely, man. I think it works really well. And, and you, you were kind of saying this, like as a mood piece, you know, very much atmospheric. Mm. You know, you've obviously from what you've shot, but then also what you were doing in, in kind of like post-production afterwards and the sound design as well. Felt very like Carpenter-esque, you know, very much like those flash forwards yeah. you had in Carpenter's Prince of Darkness and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely loved it, mate. I mean, you know, the, the three shorts I've mentioned there, you know, Run for Her and Stranger, they're they're a great, you know, kind of like trio of shorts. Um, I'm a big fan of, is it The Gunfighter as well? But, uh, you know, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so technically that was the first thing we shot with the Black Magic, to be fair. Um, and that was literally me on my own. I just said, do you know what? I've, I think I literally pulled it out of the box, like charged up the battery, put the lens on. I was like... Okay, we're going to shoot something with this, and we're going to shoot it today. And I put it on a rig, and I was like, I don't know. Oh, then I literally shot it. I wasn't even intending to do anything with it. It was just a case of shooting something, editing something, and just throwing something together. Um, but we ended up just kind of putting it out for the hell of it, and it's just a bit of fun, really. What was the last short you did before deciding, right, this is it, we're going to pull the trigger, we're going to go for the feature? And what, what was the thinking behind that? It was a series of things, really. We, we did for her, as you mentioned before, we did that in 2017. Um, and we, we, you know, again, it was a very, we try and make all our films very different. As you say, we've gone from run, which was kind of like this weird, I guess, slashery supernatural type thing into a, an, a romantic drama with a horror twist. Uh, always, we, we wanted to subvert the audience expectations and do something a bit different. And so it was a case of, we tried to get a short werewolf movie called Warehouse off the ground. That proved to be very difficult. We had a really good script for that as well, man, and it was going to be so cool. But um, unfortunately, the funding didn't come through. Things fell apart. It was quite an expensive short, and we, it was kind of a bit of a risk to try and try and get it made. But we wanted so badly to do it. Um, and so we kind of felt like, well, what do we do now? Like, this this was our plan. This is what we wanted to do. We can't now. And we was like, back to the drawing board. So I had about two, three different other ideas for short films, and... We worked in secret to try and get things that made because like we, we just felt like at this stage we needed to come out the gate with something. We'd been sort of putting out stuff fairly consistently. Um and so we were trying to like trying to do things without telling too many people and just say, look, can we just go do this, go off, do something on our own, come back and say, here, we at least we did something, and then work get you know, work our way back to getting warehouse made. Um at which point I feel like we sort of agreed that we might do it as a feature film. Um, and unfortunately the writing just, that we put a halt to it. Um, so we got to the end of 2018. I actually remember it very vividly. It was December of 2018 and we hadn't done anything that whole year. We'd worked on so many different things and so many different scripts and working to get so many different things off the ground and nothing did for whatever reason. It was always a different, you know, thing. It was money or it was a location or if it was just not getting, you know, something just didn't come together. Um, and so we, we were struggling. And so I, I just said, look, you know what, let's, let's take all these things that have been issues. Let's take everything that's been a problem for us and just solve it by just taking control of it. 